So let's go. My lesson today, and I'll have to look back at my screen. Lesson today is about the unexpected. Now, also, you know, first of all, from the unexpected, uh, you guys probably expected to see uh, Evan up here or some professional preacher that would come into town, but uh, instead you got me. Uh, and, but I'm super glad to be here, and I'm super glad to be able to talk to you guys. And I hope to give me a, you know, uh, give me a little bit of, uh, you know, grace because of uh, some of my adjectives here, you know, because. I've heard this story many times. We've all heard it many times, but I want to use it uh, from a little different perspective. So I'm, I'm going to, instead of talking about the Good Samaritan, I'm going to talk about the dumb guy that got beat up and got put in the ditch. Okay? So if we look in Luke chapter 10, we hear about this man. It just says he's a man that uh, went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Well, I can just imagine being that man. Uh, well, sorry, I, 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 dang, I, miss, I messed up my thing, but Amy's got me. Okay, here we go. We'll try, try this different because she didn't go to the slide, in, which is good. Uh, one of the things I learned when giving pre presentations is that you have to um, show that you know what you're talking about, right? And uh, you have to, sometimes you have to give somebody something that's, uh, you know, a surprise. Uh, to catch their attention and, and to bring them, uh, keep, keep their attention to what you're saying. So I think this next slide should do it. Just, just a little slide I thought I'd share from my vacation recently with, uh, with Roger and Mary Jo. You know, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to uh, listen throughout the sermon and you're going to have to, till the end, till I can explain this. But uh, it's a pretty good representation that I do know about being dumb. And uh, so uh, I can relate very much to this guy in Luke chapter 10. Okay, so let's say his, his people, he said, hey, I'm going down to Jericho. And maybe his friends, you know, I'm embellishing, obviously. Maybe his friends said, well, don't go by yourself. That's a dangerous road. And he said, ah, phooey, right? I'll be all right. So he went down. But as far as we know by himself, it looks like he's by himself, went down to, left Jerusalem down to Jericho. You know, we could think, well, it's like uh, maybe we're going to go walk through some part of, bad part of Atlanta at, at, at 2 in the morning or something, right? What was he thinking? You know, what do you think was going to happen to you? You're all on the way to Jer Jericho. Maybe Jericho was a bad place. But he went, you know, so he thought, uh, but what happened to him? On his way there, he got robbed, he got beaten, he got stripped of his clothes, and he's laying half beaten, half naked on the side of the road. So now I'm going to you know, put yourself into his position now. That, and I, I thought I did a great job with this presentation because you'll see sometimes I'm animation, and then next time I go to like Renaissance looking pictures. So it's, a, it's, re it's really good. You, know, you might have expected a more formal presentation from somebody up here. So he's beaten. Let's say you're beaten on the side of the road. What do you expect? Oh, I'm, I hope somebody comes along and helps me. Oh, good. Here I am. Who's that guy coming? Why, it's a priest. Surely a priest will help me. I'm down on the side of the road. I've been beaten. Surely that priest will help me. Why would we expect a priest to help you? Well, let's put ourselves in that, at that point today, okay? Okay, we don't really talk about priests, but uh, we, ha we have the same kind of thing. We think about this priest, did he help him? No, he didn't. Priest walked by. He's like, oh, good, here comes the priest. He's going to help me. No, the priest just kind of walked on by and tried to, said he went to the other side of the road. Keep my distance from that guy. Is that what the priest should do? A priest represents God, right? You know, Hebrews talks about us all being priests. You know, and to me, this, you know, you don't know a lot about this priest, and maybe Evan can come up here and tell us about priests and what they did and, and how they, you know, that was all set up. I know they had their own special clothes. Maybe he said, oh, sorry, like us, I'm dressed to go to church. I have my special clothes on. I cannot be bothered with this bloody guy on the road. And maybe he was like some of us that, he wasn't really thinking about what, what Jesus had said earlier, 
or that lawyer, you know, that lawyer knew, uh, to love the, God, love the Lord your God with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself. Wasn't thinking about that. Maybe he was the kind of person that um, was really good about keeping the rules. Maybe he uh, thought that was all there was to being a Christian. Let's say this go back to now to us. Let's apply this to us. Maybe that's what we think. That, uh, you know, the Bible says, and, you know, this is where I need my verses, but my memory's not so good, that uh, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. And then it says right below that, uh, the people that he was talking to said, but didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't we draw, didn't we vanquish demons? Didn't we do miracles in your name? And, uh, and Jesus said, the uh, Lord's going to say, depart, I knew you not. What? These guys sound like they did the awesome stuff, right? They might have been the, you know, the main preacher, right? They did all this stuff, all this very uh, outward stuff. But uh, somehow they didn't do it right. The Lord says, I don't know you. They didn't trust in God. They trusted it in their own works. He didn't say don't do those things. Those were great things they were doing in God in Jesus' name, but why were they doing it? So if you also you look into um, 1 Corinthians 13, it talks about these people that were doing uh, great works in the Corinthian church, right? Some of them could speak in tongues, and some of them could prophesy, and some of them could do all this other stuff. But what does Paul say? Paul says that doesn't mean anything. You're just making a bunch of noise if you're not doing it with love. He says that even if you help the poor, but you don't do it out of love, you do it to boast. You know, like let's say, oh, hey, that that priest might have said, I think I will help this guy because uh, I think I'll take a picture of it and uh, put it on Facebook. And it'll show me uh, that just how uh, godly I am and that I might get my picture in the paper. A lot of people will comment and likes, give me those emojis and stuff like that. so the priest, in this case, and whether that's, that's us, he misses out on the whole point, right? What's the sense of being a priest if you, can't even, if you don't even know the law is the main thing to help somebody? Yeah, the guy was dumb. He should not have been there. He was in the wrong place. But that guy just walked on by. So then here we are back to being the guy laying on the ground. Uh, He sees another guy coming. All right, well, maybe this guy will help me. You know, maybe this guy can help me. And it says he's a Levite that comes up to comes up down the road next. What does a Levite mean to us? Well, a Levite is somebody that was born into a certain tribe, right? You know, that one of the twelve twelve sons there, and they were the tribe that was designated to be the priests were coming out of that tribe. They didn't have their own land even. They were, they were taken care of because they were special. They were a special tribe of the Levites. You know, and I think our, um, and so they were raised as, uh, from a young child to know the law, to know these things, to know better. They, he should, you know, I'm like, well, there's the Levite. All oh, good. That's like, here's a churchgoer. You know, somebody's been going to church all their life. They ought to know better. They ought to help me, Right. You know, my audience is a little bit different here than I'd hoped, but, the, but I've had this for a while because I'm thinking, what are we thinking? We've been to church our whole lives, young people, old people, you know, that we've been up here, you know, some kids have been up here as far as the little church, you know, that Dean does, all the way up, you know, that uh, we've heard these things over and over again. We have people, ex- should, this guy expected the Levite to help him. There were expectations because that Levite was born into it. We've been born into, into the Christ's kingdom. We've sat here and we've listened about um, his great works and what he's done for us and helping the poor and all these things for our whole lives. Are we going to meet our expectations? You know, I, I was thinking about the, um, you know, the army had that, be all you can be. Right? Rise up. Meet your expectations. Learn what, you know, you know what you've, you've learned. In Hebrews it talks about 
the uh, people that were taught from the beginning, you know, their first teachings, they were taught. And when it was time for them to be teachers, they couldn't teach. They had to be taught again. So that, again, we need to learn. We need to grow. And, it, you know, it says there that you need to, they, were, they should be eating solid food. We think about babies. They can't eat solid food. But they're grown. They should be able to eat solid food now. But they're still babies. They're not living up to their expectations. If we're in that situation where um, we're not living out our, our, our Christian life by helping the poor, by loving our neighbor, you know, you, we're not doing it. We're not meeting the expectations. It's not that, uh, and you know, I just want to call us to, to try to be the men and the women of God that God wants us to be. It's not easy, because we're all, I hate to tell you all this, we're all dumb people. We all do dumb stuff. We all sin. It's all dumb. We know better. We're all dumb. Sorry. Especially if there's people online that don't know us very well. But <laughs> take it, take it, take it for, from me. We're all dumb, especially me. But, uh, you know, and we go back to, so now we go to uh, the good Samaritan, right? There's the next guy. He's sitting there. I'm, the guy's still on the ground. Here's a third guy coming up. Now, I had already tried to find this, figure this out. I was like, what is a natural, what, what is a modern day version of the goods of the Samaritan, right? Back then, we all, we've heard this story before. The Samaritans weren't the favorite people, right? They were kind of uh, uh, the kind of people that, uh, you know, somebody looked down on because of their lineage or something or just their, you know, the race or whatever, you know. But what kind of people would I be afraid of, you know, unexpected if, to help me? So on the inside, I thought, oh, I hope there's nobody like this, but, uh, you know, I thought of these people that have neck tattoos, you know, <laughs> those guys scare me, you know, they have these weird tattoos or something like that. I, I mean, I heard, oh, oh, this guy's not going to help me. He looks weird, right? But you know what? That's the person that stops and helps him, right? You know, it, it wasn't unexpected. Didn't expect the Samaritan to help, uh, but he did. He stops, and he... Uh, we know the story, right? The, um, he helps the guy, takes him to the, he goes out of his way big time. He goes and gets him stuff and takes him to a, a hotel, we'll say, pays for his room, gives the, the hotel some more money uh, in case he needs it. And he does just what uh, it wasn't expected of him to do, but he did it. And he sets a great example for us. And what we need to know you know, and my challenge to us all, you know, I, I really try to face this myself, is that there are hundreds and thousands of, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep saying dumb people that have done dumb things, and, then, and, and they need our help. I need your help. They're everywhere. And sometimes it's totally out of your comfort zone to help those people, right? You don't know what their situation is. Why, why is it, you know, uh, one of the verses there in Luke, or was it in Matthew 7? I don't know. But it says, judge not to be judged, right? Well, I'm judging, right? Calling them dumb. Uh, but uh, people are in all kinds of circumstances. They're in sinful circumstances. They're in weird financial circumstances. They're in health circumstances. All kinds of things that could have been avoided. But does uh, the Bible tell us to go help those people that just had, uh, you know, tried their best and did everything right and still failed? Or is it just like, no, we're supposed to help the people that, uh, uh, like this guy, maybe somebody told him not to go to Jericho, he went anyway, right? Got himself in trouble, and then, uh, you know, then he, uh, you know, it's not my fault he's there, right? You know, I, I'm, I'm the priest, I'm Levite, I walk by, I'm not a doctor, what am I supposed to do for this guy? Well, we have all kinds of people in our society that are like that, that have all kinds of needs. And, and that's what we're called to do as Christians, is to help those people. It's uncomfortable. You know, you got to get out of your comfort zone. Uh, but we have lots of opportunity. 
And that's what God is expecting from us, that even though we look at somebody and they did something they shouldn't have done, they should have known better, I mean, we're, we're called to help those people. You know, Debbie was, I've shown Debbie this, uh, you know, FaceTime, this, this uh, slide presentation. She's like, well, how are you going to tie that picture? Are you getting arrested? No, I didn't get arrested, by the way. Thanks to Roger. <laughs> but uh, it was funny. Uh, he's, she said, how are you going to tie this in? And I'm like, hmm, well, I'm going to tie it in. So let's see. So how, I'm just going to talk about how dumb I am, first of all. Um, so what happens is that... Uh, Something's unexpected, right? You know, I'm sorry. I didn't know that you couldn't get out of a car if the car got stopped when you're in the, we were, and you had to use the restroom. <laughs> you know, so, so I got, so we got stopped. Uh, and so I got out of the car because, uh, you know, I told, I did tell Mary Jo and Roger before I started that traveling with me might be very horrific, you know, based on my, you know, medical conditions, right? You know, uh, can't help it, really. Um, so Mary Jo did ask me if, you know, everybody, you know, pretty much you know, a lot of people know that I've been working on my bucket list, right? You know, trying to go places and do the things I have on my bucket list. Uh, so Mary Jo did ask me, is that on your bucket list? Getting put in a police car? Uh, no, it wasn't. Just something that, I, that had just happened, right? You know, and then, uh, yeah, so, so I can fill you guys in on the, on the big story later, but uh, I, was, I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't being meek and uh, wasn't being humble. You know, Mary Jo was, and Roger are so, such good Christian friends of mine. You know, and Mary Jo said, well, Jesus would have just got back in the car. And I said, well, Jesus didn't have to go to the restroom. You know, so, <laughs> uh, but th that's, that's what happens to us. And we need, we need, uh, we need some grace, you know, that uh, something's happened to us. And so this, then, you know, I was thinking about you know, one of my, my favorite lines from Forrest Gump, he says, I'm not a smart man. And that was me too again. And so I kept going. How am I tying this in, you guys think? Well, so I was a little indignant about this whole episode. You know, so uh, what do you do when you're indignant in these days, right? You put it on Facebook, right? All right, so little boy. Well, that didn't work quite. It was a little bit different than what I thought. It was not smart. Um, first of all, people are mean, right? Half the people are mean, way mean. And then half the people are mean in your favor, kind of, which is kind of goofy. But, uh, and this thing got shared and split up and commented. And on my, my phone was bing, 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 bing. People comment on this and that. And I didn't read all of it because it's like, okay, it's terrible. Um, but after quite a while, I said, okay, uh, this is a great opportunity. You know, I always like, I always say this whenever I get up here, here to preach that, uh, you know, I don't have that opportunity very often, but the, the, the Bible tells us that if you confess God, you know, Jesus before men, uh, he will, you know, he'll confess you before his father, right? So uh, I did take this one opportunity that I had this large audience of people all through who knows where they are in the Facebook world. But uh, I said, I do have a confession to make. Yeah, and that confession is that I believe Jesus is, is, is the Son of God, the Christ, who died on the cross for my sins. You know, and so I had that opportunity. You know, if you try to look at silver lining, I could pre set that out there. You know, that, and, and that's where we're going to end today. You know, that no matter what you've done, nor how you got in your situation, God ain't gonna, doesn't leave you. And, and it might be embarrassing I was like, you know, I'm pretty, you know, it can be very embarrassing <laughs> the situation I was in, but um, that you're, but Christ died for us, so we don't have to be embarrassed, we have to be accepting, we have to know that we're sinners, we have to know that we need somebody, this guy that, he needed somebody, he was helpless, right, we're helpless people sometimes, God put us, put our our church together so that we can help each other, be the hands and the feet, right? And, and if you're not helping somebody, you know, or you don't know who to help, you're not looking very good, because we're, we're everywhere, <laughs> you know, people that need help. So, uh, you know, today we have this, uh, we always do a traditional uh, 
you know, Evan says it's a traditional invitation song that if you have a need, come up. But, you know, it, uh, you know I was going to say, I've done it before, right? Very scary, walking up this little line and then get up here and say, oh, I'm not doing too good. Whether it's spiritually, physically, or whatever. Uh, a little scary, but you know what? We're all in this together. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We all, we all have one thing in common. Jesus died for us. Don't bear a burden by yourself. If you don't have the relationship with somebody to talk to or you need somebody to talk to, we'll gather around you. We'll pray for you. It'll make you feel better. You'll get over the embarrassment if that's it. But or else, if uh, you guys don't have relationships with people that you can talk to, we need to work on it. You know, sometimes we have uh, friends and that we meet with all the time, and then sometimes we have people that are visiting that we don't know. Make sure you talk to those people. Make your own groups. Make sure you're involved. Be all the Christian that you can be. This is my prayer for you guys today. So, um, you have a song, Roger? Okay, if you have a need, please come forward and uh, let us know, and we'll try to take care of it as best we can.